A new ProPublica report says Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas privately pushed for a higher salary and to let justices take speaking fees. Friends say Thomas was becoming frustrated with his financial situation in 2000 after he started raising his young grandnephew. Now, ProPublica points out this was around the same time he was forming relationships with the wealthy benefactors that are now under scrutiny by Senate Democrats. NBC News has not confirmed this reporting. But with us now for more is Mark Joseph Stern, senior writer covering courts and the law at Slate. Mark, I just want you to know I have dubbed myself the vice president of your fan club. So let's, let's start here. What stood out to you in this latest bombshell report from ProPublica? So one detail that really stood out was the timing. Um, we're told that Justice Thomas made this veiled threat to resign from the court in early 2000 um, after attending an all expenses paid conference at a luxury resort, which shocker, he did not report on his ethics disclosure forms. Uh, and of course that meant that uh, a presidential election was coming up and Al Gore at the time seemed poised to potentially win. And so it looks like Justice Thomas was playing hardball. You know, he actually set a timeline for this Republican congressman he spoke with. He said uh, one or two justices, wink, wink, might step down within a year. And so I think it shows that he was really serious about getting the ball rolling here. Uh, and so were Republicans who sort of rallied around him. You know, they pressured not just Congress, but the administrative office of the courts, the bureaucracy that runs the federal judiciary, to do whatever it could to infuse Justice Thomas with a higher salary. And when that didn't work, of course, that's when the billionaires entered stage left to start subsidizing his lifestyle. So I, I just think it's a remarkable remarkable turn. There's almost sort of the before times and the after times. And, and since about this conversation in 2000, Clarence Thomas has been living the lifestyle of someone who makes about 30 times more than he actually does. Mm. I, I, I want to put this up on the screen because there were many conservatives, to your point, that were reportedly worried that Thomas really would resign. One former Florida congressman said that we wanted to make sure he felt comfortable in his job and he was being paid properly. That is a Quote, we wanted to make sure he felt comfortable in his job and was being paid properly. How do you think this informs the other reporting out there? You know, that in the years that followed, Thomas accepted gifts and travel that seemed to go against ethical norms. I'm thinking of the luxury RV, right? Well, so again, you know, he 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 in 2000 says I might step down, maybe even under a Democratic president. All of these billionaires enter, and he suddenly becomes sort of ensconced in this new world that he had never really had access to before, uh, with people like Harlan Crow, who are these conservative luminaries. He's brought in to speak for 10 minutes at these conferences in the woods, surrounded by the richest people on earth. He's placed on on super yachts where he can sail and talk about, uh, you know, conservative economic theory over cigars and caviar. And suddenly, all of the incentives in his life really move toward supporting the kind of legal infrastructure that keeps these guys wealthy. The, quote, limited government attacks on, on uh, you know, Congress's power to regulate the economy, uh, an assault on the Congress congressional power to tax rich people. Uh, all of these sort of hallmarks of his jurisprudence emerge during this period and all flow to the benefit of his new friends. So I do think it's important to put in this context that it's not just about one or two individual rulings. It's about the whole of his jurisprudence shifting further and further to the right as he's hanging out with the very people who stand to benefit the most from that shift. It seems like Senate Democrats will have a lot to chew on when they come back into the new year. Uh, before I let you go, the body of late Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, it lies in repose in the Supreme Court right now. Her funeral is tomorrow. How do you see her, her legacy when you look at the court today, given everything that is happening as it relates to the ethical dilemma that the Supreme Court is facing? 
her her legacy is really being dismantled before our eyes. You know, mm -hmm. she was a center right justice who believed in compromise and moderation, in keeping the court in tune with where the American public wanted it to be. Um, that turned out to be a vital tool that none of the current conservative justices have or care about. And so these justices are assaulting her legacy on separation of church and state, abortion rights, most obviously, uh, so many issues that she cared deeply about. Affirmative of action also comes to mind, uh, and doing so arrogantly, you know, with no concern for how their decisions will be interpreted by the public, with no concern for the extraordinary collateral damage that this court is inflicting on the country. That is the exact kind of thing that Justice O'Connor tried to avoid her entire life. And so I guess I just have to say, you know, at the end of the day, her vote in Bush v. Gore, a catastrophic mistake, that may stand as the part of her legacy that survives everything, because that set in motion the current conservative court in the long run, and this court has decided that her judicial legacy, that her actual precedents and rulings do not deserve an iota of respect.